High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. be cold and rainy outside but it is heating up inside the Ravens nest as the defending Catholic League champions the Crusaders of Stepanak uh, they come in for a rare Tuesday afternoon hyped up showdown against the Ravens of St. Raymond's tonight's or today's CHSAA showdown is presented by Maspeth Federal Savings but we welcome you inside uh, a warm Ravens nest, that is for sure. Dylan Butler alongside John Perez. Uh, and John, listen, uh, it's January. There's still a lot of the season left to be played. But maybe one of the most hyped games, one of the most anticipated games on the schedule this year. It's a highly anticipated matchup, especially for Stepanak coming into this game. This is, you know, when you come in as a defending champ, Dylan, you are every team's best competition game, yeah. and the biggest game right you've got the target on your back and that's exactly what Stepanak has had to deal with on top of the hype of their individual players and for St. Ray's a team that last year lost the most games under the Lopez administration uh, they have something to prove they've got a lot of talent we're going to dive into those players in a second but a huge game implication wise could be the first of four matchups between these two this year yeah they play twice in the regular season they could meet each other in the archdiocese maybe the championship game and then perhaps as well in the intersectional playoffs. Stepanak, a team, as you said, they go from uh, hunter to hunted this year now, and uh, they had a rare three-game losing streak, albeit, listen, to national competition, uh, but they had to kind of circle the wagons a little bit. They had about uh, a seven and a half, eight grueling days of practice, and they showed what they could do then against Iona at the Westchester County Center, a huge crowd on, on, on hand for that, so we anticipate Pat Maseroni's team to be at their uh, highest level here today. And what could be better than getting off to a bad spell than just knocking off your rival in emphatic fashion in front of four-digit amount of people. I think they had 2,000 people watching and they had 3,600 in the arena as well. Stepanak knows that they have the targets on their back as well and they're just going to have to go through these stretches, especially on a national schedule. Some people will say that the CHSAA uh, itself could compete nationally and that's the case as Stepanak uh, looks to build upon that. Listen, three losses, but they're 3-0 and in uh, league play. And St. Raymond's is 4-0 in league play. And they're a team that you mentioned last year. Uh, they had a losing season, the first ever for George Lopez. But he wasn't concerned. He knew he had a very young team. They have matured, and they have really leveled up this year, 11-1 overall. 11-1 overall, led by Ty Turnage and Brandon Storrs, who we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. Those are two guys that can really light up the lamp. They defend they rebound this is a rejuvenated raven team and if you have to sacrifice one year to have uh, a positive three years in the future george lopez will take that every time we have some terrific uh, impact players here as well and uh, that conversation starts with stepanak and uh, generally speaking that conversation also then begins with Boogie Fland. It feels like we've talked about Boogie for years and years, uh, but he is a guy certainly to keep an eye out for today. And, and uh, listen, a lot of the hype, this is a sold-out crowd. 
Uh, a lot of it is because number one is in the building, Kentucky bound Boogie Flan, and he has a great backcourt partner as well in the junior, Danny Carbusia. This has just been a fun one two punch over the last few years. Boogie wears number one because he is the number one point guard, not just in the league, but in the entire country, headed to Big Blue Nation at Kentucky. Really improved his off-hand, off-ball skills, uh, as well as his shooting ability. He's been everything that Calipari has won. And meanwhile, on the other side, Carbushi is only a year younger uh, than Boogie Flad, and he's been garnering the offers as well. He's someone who can really lead the floor, and what makes Stepanak so great, especially with those two guards, they do so much of the same things, and they both do it well and at elite levels. So if there are stretches where Carbusia or Fland are off the floor or one of them has to lead the charge, Stepanak's sitting pretty. Carbusia this year has become a 94-foot player. It's been important, and Pat Masseroni told us on the call, listen, it's been some tough coaching because Carbusia wants to be recruited at the highest level, like Fland was. To do so, you've got to be that complete player and be consistent at that. And that's what Carbusia has been working on there. So we talked about the backcourt for Stepanak. Let's show you the impact players for St. Ray's. And uh, it is their backcourt as well. And a, a terrific duo. And again, it feels like these guys should be seniors because they've been on this varsity team since freshman. But on the left, it's Brandon Stores, more kind of a wing as, a, as opposed to a two, but uh, very much running the show is Ty Turnage at the point. What really stands out to me about Ty Turnage is the five assists per game, Dylan, and he does a good job of facilitating and setting up Stores. These two are responsible for 33 of the Ravens' points per game. Uh, they do everything so well. Stores can clean up the glass and really get it up the floor, and Ty Turnage, when you need to slow it down and get a bucket, he'll get it to the right in the hands. We talked about the, the, the impact this game might have on the standings. If we, if we show you those standings, listen, uh, these two teams, it is, again, still very early in the season. And really, after national schedules for both, you'll really get you sink your teeth into the heart of your league schedule. But this is an early season battle for first place, right? Where, as we said, St. Raymond's 4-0 and Iona just behind them at 3-0. These teams love winning their tournaments. They love going to other states. They love uh, hoisting those trophies. There's nothing better than winning a league title in New York City, and it starts here in the Archdiocese in St. Ray's. We're going to do something that they haven't done in over a decade when all these guys are in diapers, Dylan. Uh, get to the mountaintop, and for Stepanak, they want to build that dynasty. They've been in the final every year for the last few years, uh, looking to build upon that, especially when you've got a player like Boogie Flan. You don't want to waste it in getting runner-up appearances. And there you see the standings right there. St. Ray's with four wins over uh, Stepanak as well. With that said, those numbers could change. Uh, in the few weeks, but how about this? I mean, just what a great representation of the CHSAA when you've got the top half of the conference, uh, not just above 500, but comfortably five games above 500. So we spoke with both coaches leading up to this showdown, and of course we identified keys for this game as we spoke with Stepanak and St. Raymond's, and uh, we'll show you those keys now. Yeah, the biggest thing here between Stepanak and St. Raymond, you look at their bottom keys, right? For Stepanak, they want to control the glass. St. Raymond wants to dominate the boards. Why is that important? Well, you got a rebound, number one. These two teams want to go up and down the floor uh, with the fastest of the crew. They like to run and gun, and that's exactly what they'll do. So with that said, if you're going to run and gun, you've got to limit the turnovers and guard in the half court. Slow down St. Ray's. And for St. Ray's, match the intensity of Boogie Flan and Carbusia and get back in transition defense because it's going to be a track meet this afternoon. Yeah, it should be an outstanding game. No team is scoring more points in the entire Catholic League than St. Ray's. And Stepanak is just behind them as well. So uh, this could be one of those games. Maybe we might reach triple digits. We're not sure. But uh, it is a game that we will certainly uh, get some pretty high scoring in. That is uh, for sure uh, this afternoon. It was a game that originally was scheduled for 6.30, but the weather... Uh, in the area, push this one up. No JV game before, so just uh, the varsity one here to start. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one today. Stepanak and St. Ray's, and it's all coming up next on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, 
Through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. My name is Grant Vermeer, a member of the Crown Refs community. My first year as a high school official, that's when I found out about the Crown Refs community. Having my military background, I love being a part of teams. I want to be a part of a group that has high standards, that holds each other accountable, but also supports and loves each other, and has a desire for everyone in the group to grow. If you're a young referee or someone who loves refereeing and wants to be a part of a group, this is an amazing community for you. I feel like I've gotten better as an official. I've had a community and friends and support through this process, which can otherwise be a little bit lonely as you're on the road a lot. The culture is amazing in here. Make sure come check it out are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company varsity media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like tv and radio media reach out to varsity media to get the best bang for your buck Hey sports fans, did you know Varsity Media live stream broadcasts get viewed by college coaches nationwide? Through our announcer's storytelling and insight on your athletes, we can help your players get an edge on college recruiting. Find out how by reaching out to Varsity Media today, 516-403-2050, or email ben at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to the Parkchester section of the Bronx. Dylan Butler, John Perez, our entire Varsity Media crew here for this one. A sold-out crowd here in advance as well, uh, which just kind of speaks, John, I think, to the anticipation for this one. Yeah, the student section getting here at 3 o'clock right after dismissal and parked right underneath uh, the basket nearest to Stepanak's bench. Don't think they're going to be uh, in Danny Carbusia and the rest of uh, Boogie Flan's ears the entire afternoon. The buzz is palpable. We thought that since there would be a 6.30 game, you would have a great crowd and moving up to 4.30 to avoid uh, the inclement weather, that that would turn fans aside. No, they just got here a little bit earlier and everyone out there for watching, thank you for joining us, but this hasn't stopped uh, a crowd that has been anticipating this big matchup uh, whenever they played it. And listen, it's easier for the students, right? Because you could just, they're done at two. Yep. Just hang out, do your homework, do some studying and hang out with your boys and uh, get ready for an, a terrific Catholic League showdown. Time for the starting lineups. First for the visitors from Stepanak. A little bit of a different change. You see on the top left, zero. It's 14, actually. He just went through our screen. Danny Carbusia forgot his jersey at home. You see joining him, of course, Boogie Fland, Braylon Ritfo, perhaps the X Factor here today. For the Crusaders, Jordan Gabriel and Josiah Jervis round out the starting five for head coach Pat Masseroni. What a terrific career it's been so far. Ninth season for Masseroni, a 2006 graduate of Stepanak High School. And look at all the different camera people there right behind for the starting lineup for St. Ray's. We'll show it to you now. Ty Turnage, the freshman phenom, Anderson Diaz. Brandon Storrs, Kamari White, and Elijah Cherry. When we speak about X-Factors, Cherry might be that guy for the Ravens. Of course, they are coached by George Lopez in his 12th season as head coach, a 1992 graduate of Sacred Heart in Yonkers. Dylan, I think the biggest thing with all the fanfare here, especially for St. Ray's, I know they played at the Hoop Hall Classic over at Baruch. There was a huge atmosphere there. It's always different when you've got a buzzing crowd at home. And for St. Ray's, keep an eye on them for the first two minutes. You kind of want to keep it calm and uh, don't buy into the hype. Continue to play your game and think about uh, at Hoosiers, right? It's still 10 feet away from the basket. The officials here for tonight's game. A very good crew here. It's Mark Casamasa, Sean Morgan, and Max Olivier. And, of course, we want to thank Crown Refs as well for one of the sponsors uh, for today's game. Before we get going, just wanted to say for... Crown Refs, listen, improve your officiating with Crown Refs, the ultimate resource for basketball officials. Explore 
their podcast and daily videos on all social media platforms and join the Crown Refs community. Simply go to patreon.com Crown Refs. Serve the game. So we are ready to go here. The defending champions, the Crusaders of Stepanak, they win the opening tip and it's Carbusia to get the ball past half court. Man-to-man -man defense for St. Ray's and already this standing room only crowd with a chance of defense. They push it inside. No basket inside. That was number three, Braylon Ritfo. And here comes Turnage the other way. Bounce pass to the corner. A little shake and bake by Stores. Pushes it back out. Already we see Stores is bigger this year. 6'4", has dropped some weight as well. Down to 182. That's what I was going to say too. Bigger but also leaner yeah. as well. And that allows him to explode to the basket. Stores doubled. Kicks it back out. Shot clock down to eight. Driving. Scoop layup is good. Anderson Diaz, the freshman. Our first point of this game. A little bit of a game time decision if he would get the start. Still trying to figure out his role on the team, but playing well beyond his years as a freshman. Jordan Gabriel up and under. No good. And Turnage gets the rebound. Quick outlet looking for Stores. He's doubled and gets it back out for Turnage. Turnage and Stores, when you talk recruitment, uh, they've got the largest amount on the St. Ray's team, but they're also the most seasoned on a still young team. Look at this move to the hoop. Cherry, though, doesn't get it to finish. And we go the other way. There's Boogie, hands it off. Ritfo, the layup. That was a beautiful no-look pass and a sweet time to Ritfo. Stepanak wants to get Ritfo going. He's their X factor. Once he's in the flow of things, Carbusia and Fland will fall right behind him in line. This will be a fun matchup between Carbusia and Turnage. Stores drives off the glass, no good. Big rebound inside, but Gabriel, excuse me, Ritvo with the strip. This allows Carbusia to get up and out and get the layup. And you know, it started with Jordan Gabriel on the other end, 21 for Stepanak, doing a good job causing the misdirect and the adjustment for St. Ray's that led to the outlet pass. Kamari White. And man, this crowd wants to get pumped for everything, John. They are uh, really hyped. Getting to the basket and getting fouled was Anderson Diaz. It's always fun the first couple of minutes of a game, especially for an anticipated matchup. These, like we said, these students waiting an hour. And, you know, it's really the student section that galvanizes the rest of the crowd, right? The rest of the crowd will go and, and get excited with the students. Turnage to inbound, finds Stores. Stores turns in his defender, pulls up. Off rim, no good. Battle for the board goes to Flan. He was the one called for the foul earlier on. Carbusia drives baseline, uh, but a foul was called there. It's the first time I'm seeing Carbusia and Flan in person since last March when they won the title. And they look a little bit uh, more muscular, right? Like they've been spending time not just in the gym honing their craft, but also just building up their strength. Well, listen, Boogie Flan, come June 1st, he'll be in Lexington, Kentucky, and <laughs> Calipari and his guys, I think, want to see some size as Flan is fouled by Stores. That's one thing, too, with the head fake that gets Stores to bite and the infraction incurs. So first free throws will be taken by Boogie Flan, who is excellent at this part of his craft. Averaging 85% on the season. But no respect here in the Bronx this afternoon. The chance of overrated ring down at the Ravens' nest. See, that's the worst chant in all of sports. Because one, it's not true. <laughs> uh, here's a replay of the foul. And just look at the head fake for Fland. Got it with his feet, too. Good job there. Just getting some separation, drawing the, drawing the foul there. I always thought it was interesting. Sometimes you see this in the ACC. Fans will go quiet when the other best player is at the line. That throws them off their rhythm. Second free throw good. 6-2, the early lead for Stepanak. Here's Turnage. Third year as a starting point guard for this program. And then there's miscommunication there between Stores and White. 
turnover for the Ravens. Stepanak doing a good job team defending and covering over on the switches. That's causing St. Ray's not able to generate their offense and get into their offensive flow in the half court. Carbusia hands off. There's Flan for three. Back iron no good, but an uncontested rebound as Jervis finishes inside. Jervis really good. He, one of the tallest players on the floor, too. 6'5", sophomore. Turnage stripped on his way up by Ritvo, and the Ravens maintain possession. There's a good look at Ty Turnage underneath. Dad Billy now the head coach at Holy Cross. It's a longtime coach, really successful at Wings Academy. And a foul called on the way up. Ritvo was called for the hold. Wings, one of the best uh, PSAL programs, yeah. too, in New York City. Had good, talented guards. Jose Perez, who played in Manhattan and then uh, was supposed to play at West Virginia, and who knows what happened there. But, uh, yeah, a lot of talent coming out of Wings. S. George Lopez, do you, are you playing Holy Cross this year? It's like, no, I don't need that headache. Not on our schedule, thankfully. You don't need turnage versus turnage. That's for sure, as Fland up court. Good defense. Good hands by Diaz. You mentioned freshman, 6'1", 165. And when you're a freshman and you start on a program like St. Ray's, you know you've got game, that is for sure. 100%, and look no further than Turnage and Stores. And the same is true for this man. Carbusia pulls up from a three. Back rim, no good. Diaz the rebound. Hands off, driving inside was Kamari White, the sophomore, and he was fouled on his way there. This is what St. Ravens has to do. They gotta start attacking the basket. Don't settle, try and create your own shot and get to the free throw line. So Kamari White, good look at him there. Going to the foul line. They call him Wolverine. Look as he busts inside, and yeah, an easy one to call against Gabriel, a 6'8 senior. Front rim, the second. And here's Flans. Diaz gets that job, but it feels like certainly early on, we're seeing a lot of different looks for Flans, as now it's Turnage guarding him. Fires across court, driving baseline, back inside the Flan, what a look as Flan gets the layup. Yeah, not sure if that was Turnage who had the initial uh, defense of him once he crossed the uh, the perimeter, but yeah, you're right. You gotta throw a lot of Boogie Flan, but you gotta keep your eyes on him too. Can't let him get into the lane uncontested. Great look by Jervis on the assist, and it's already an eight point lead now for, the, for Stepanak. Here's Turnage driving inside, and again, lost it on his way in. And again, the ball stays with the Ravens. Our first substitution of the game. Checking in, number 10, Dylan Perry. Another sophomore. That's kind of scary, too, when I was looking over my chart. Listen, Boogie Fland, obviously a senior and one of the top seniors in the country, but there's a lot of impactful sophomores on this team, man. No, and Perry, he's a physical guy. He's tough, athletic. Uh, his numbers might not reflect all that he brings to the floor, but... Stepanak loves him. Turnage, corner three, no good. Battle for the loose ball. On the court, inside, stores, can't get it to go. Good tip back, though, to Diaz, and he was fouled on the drive attempt. I don't know if they've opened up the lids on this end, Dylan. I mean, the Ravens can't buy a bucket. They're getting some good looks. Now, credit Stepanak's defense. They're not making it easy on them, but still, uh, for St. Raymond, it's got to be a little bit frustrating not to see the ball go through the hole. Carbusia was called for the foul. And there's Turnage handing off to Stores. Top of the key to White. Stores, what a move up and under. Good shoulder fake there. St. Raymond needed the bucket in the worst way. Perry up top, hands off. Carbusia for three. Off the mark. Rebound was pulled down by Cherry. 
And now Turnage will dial it from three, and it's good. See what a simple bucket can do for you, Dylan. It starts to snowball, and just like that, it's a three-point contest. Jervis a little bit out of control, and he loses it off of Perry. Second sub, this one for Stepanak, as Hassan Caressi will check in. And the Ravens nest buzzing. Evermore. <laughs> inside the final two minutes of this first quarter. Turnage from three, again, rimmed out. And here's Fland. This time guarded by Storrs. Fland blows by him, a scoop layup is good. Here's the thing with Boogie Fland going into his senior year, he's a lot more aggressive, does a good job of getting his. We saw it in the city final and carrying it over to the regular season. Double comes Storrs' way and part of that double was an over-the-back foul called on Ritvo. And by my count, that's his second already. Both teams do speak about their depth, and uh, it seems like it'll be utilized here this afternoon. Looking to check in now, Josh Rivera, the freshman for Stepanak. It's one of the things, too, that I really like about the Catholic League, Dylan, is if you're good, you're going to play, and it doesn't matter the year. And look no further, obviously, we talked about the Ravens calling up stores and turnage as freshmen. You see it with Stepanak. I mean, R.J. Davis was up as a freshman. The Griffin brothers, uh, Boogie Fland. As long as you work hard, put the ball in the hole, fill your role, you're going to play. And for Stepanak, they've got that uh, in their guy as well in Josh Rivera. Stores, George Rivera said to us, you know, if you want to be elite, you have to be consistently really, really good. And he says through 12 games of this season to this point, that's what Storrs has been. He went from second team all league, and again, one of the best leagues, if not the best in the country, to first team last year. That's a corner three off the mark. Look at the battle for the rebounds. Here comes Turnage. This is what they want to do, get out in transition, and Turnage gets the bucket. Love and it feels... It feels like this is where they're at their best and they can get out in transition, St. Ray's. And it starts with them cleaning up on the glass there. You see the offensive foul moving screen on Caressi, the 6'5 sophomore, and that was one of the keys to the game. For St. Ray's, dominate the glass because it allows you to get up the floor. Exhibit A coming into fruition. And now it's Amir Sullivan, so Stepanak really utilizing their whole bench with uh, some early, not troubles, but con foul concerns. Diaz hands off to Turnage. Back to the freshman Diaz. Oh, what a move. Diaz to the hoop. No good. Loose ball. Goes to Perry. Look out. He ran right into her. I should say White ran right into him. And White will be called for the foul. So point seven is the difference in shot and game clock. So essentially Stepanak can hear and hold for the last and take a lead into the second quarter. That's Amir Sullivan. Backs it up, a senior, part of that second unit. He's the guy who runs the point. Nice handoff to Fland. Splits through players in the lane, no good. Battle for the loose ball. You see the big man inside, Colin Pang, number 33. 6'8", 230. And a guy this year, John, who's able to defend on the perimeter. He does so well defending on the perimeter. An offensive foul against Stepanak. I think that's going to go against uh, Dylan Perry. And so now the Ravens with a chance to take the lead going into the second quarter, which is a good moral victory. You know, they were down seven early on. Shots weren't falling, weren't getting the calls. And either way, they'll at least be trailing by one, or at least down one possession. Yeah, Pang missed that first. The guy who's really come into his own this year. A great rebounder and a better perimeter defender. When we talk about an X factor for Stepanak, that's Braylon Ritfo. Well, Pang, with his size, he's got the ability now to defend a bigger wing kind of a player in Ritfo. Final seven seconds of this first quarter. Doubled 
in the corner with Sullivan. Look at the defense here by the Ravens. Last second shot is good. Bearing it was Caressi, which gives Stepanak the lead at the break. They are up by two. It's a fun one here in the Bronx. Second quarter when we return here on Varsity Media. This is Jalen Brunson. You're watching Varsity Media. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. We welcome you back to the Raven's Nest here in the Park Chester section of the Bronx. Dylan Butler, John Perez, our entire varsity media crew, and there's a look inside the Stepanak huddle with Pat Masseroni. We mentioned before what a terrific job Masseroni has done. Stepanak is in his blood, a 2006 graduate. His associate head coach, Rodney Swain. He got Alan Shepard and Alexis Nunez as well as assistant coaches. You know, Dylan, a lot of people, when they hear a coach is building a program, they just think, all right, let's have two winning seasons and you build something good. Pat Masseroni has turned this little school in White Plains into a national powerhouse with some of the best players in the country, and not just that, going to the best schools, playing in the NBA as well. He's just done a fantastic job year after year. He turns out not just great talent, but winning seasons. It's not an easy thing to do, specifically in the Catholic League where everybody's at your neck. Fantastic job for him nine seasons through and looking for his third city title this year. And now that he's got a guy like Boogie Flan, look at this. Look inside, and Pang, though, cannot finish. The ball stays with the Ravens, and a corner three is knocked down by Kamari White. Well, three's better than two, right, Dylan? Exactly. And that was the play design. I, George Lopez <laughs> drew that up verbatim. But you mentioned before you've got guys who have played at very high levels. Look, Joel Soriano currently, right, part of uh, the resurgence at St. John's. But there's not been a more hyped player, perhaps, than a Boogie Fland. And, and because of that, now you're invited everywhere, right? And you think about the Stepanak uh, schedule to this point. You know, they open up, they go to Hoop Hall West, and they play Perry, Arizona, and uh, Corona Centennial, then they go from there down to maybe the best national tournament in the country, the City of Palms down at Fort Myers. Scoop layup, good finish inside by Caressi. No, and it's a well-traveled schedule. Fland gets all the hype. I mean, let's remember, look at last year, the two years ago, Final Four, you had R.J. Davis and A.J. Griffin. Now, obviously, the Hawks, but Duke and Carolina connections there. Caressi spins it up top. There is Flan, top of the key for three, and he points out exactly how many points he just got to the St. Ray's crowd. See, I know the sign was three, but the circle's in there. I think he means I want to drop 30 on you guys. <laughs> well, he's got nine already of his team's 19. Turnage! He's got eight. Classic guard battle, uh, the present against the future, but either way, for Turnage, he's saying, hey, wait a minute, I can hang with this guy. Yeah, so many fun matchups inside of this one, whether it's stores and as a look inside. Good defending by Pang, but look at the strength there by Caressi still. Well, see, Pang had to come over and help. He was unchecked uh, down low, Perry. That's why it led to the easy bucket. The one thing with St. Raymond's is they don't have anybody to stay home and defend down low. Now we are heating up a little bit here. Diaz with the floater. And we've got a timeout that was called by St. Ray's. And it's a 30. So we'll keep it right here. This winter, Varsity Media is proud to announce our partnership with Gipper the number one social media content creation platform. 
for athletic programs. There's thousands of the best social media sports graphics, templates. You've got social media, automation, AI, powered one-click background removal, and the mobile app for easy content creation on the go. To learn more, visit www.gipper.com. And there's a look at the St. Ray's huddle, and inside of that huddle is their head coach, George Lopez. We mentioned him before, 12th season, and he's a guy too. Listen, he's from Sacred Heart, but he might as well be an alum. Got his start under the great Gary DeCesar. And then coach was also an assistant on, for Oliver Antigua on that last championship team in 2012. And uh, after Antigua went uh, to the college route, George Lopez got his shot. And he's certainly done a fantastic job. Always a competitive team. Top talent as well. Uh, you think over the recent years, you've got uh, you've got uh, Omar Silvario, uh, who played at Hofstra, Rhode Island, uh, and then the Jelly Fam, right? That took uh, yeah. New York City by storm with Isaiah Washington. Carbusia drives to the hoop, but he was fouled on his way there. Good job just getting to the hole for Stepanak. And well, you we mentioned DeCesar, and it was interesting, right? Gary DeCesar and De La Salle. He's coaching out of Chicago now, and uh, he has been for quite a while. Uh, came back here into the Bronx. There's a layup inside for Ritfo. But that was Friday night. And listen, George Lopez, like all these coaches, he's got a routine in the pregame, but he really couldn't get to that routine because he wanted to make sure that De Caesar and De La Salle had everything they needed before the game. And listen, the Ravens won. There's Stores pulling up. And, uh, and then De Caesar and his guys got a great meal from the Pine Restaurant about a mile down the road here on Tremont Avenue. So I guess a win-win <laughs> on that trip home. Yeah, no, 100%. You got to check out the Pine if you're here in the Bronx. Turnage missed the three, and now Stepanak can get out and run. Baseline, Carbusia. Almost did recognize him because he's wearing number 14 instead of zero, but doing a good job getting up the floor, fills his lane really well, and an easy deuce for Stepanak. 25-22. The lead for Stepanak. Here's Stores turning on Fland. Front rim, no good. Fland the rebound, and he's out running. Hands off, cross court, Carbusia, the one more. Ritvo for three, off the rim, no good. Battle for the loose ball, it goes to the Ravens. Turnage pulls up from three, that's good! Turnage had to make a decision there, do you throw up the lob to Elijah Cherry, do I hoist from three, and he said, I'll knock another one down. Third triple of this first half for Ty Turnage. We're tied at 25, Carbusia kicks it. That three off the mark by Sullivan. And the rebound pulled down by Stores. Stores nearly lost the handle, drives, lefty layup is good. Good job to hook around, find some space in the lane. Fill the basket, St. Ray's in front. Pulling up, Carbusia, no good. And there is Stores with the rebound. Hands off, quick three, that one was blocked. The attempt by Cherry. Ball on the court, we've got a jump. And the possession goes to Stepanak. Pang to the bench, back in is Kamari White. As inbounding it will be Caressi, the sophomore. He's got a St. Bonaventure offer. Brother Suleiman, remember him, of course, played at Iona Prep, then went to Richmond, had a grad year at Radford. One of three basketball playing brothers is Hassan Karesi. Thanksgiving's must always be interesting, right? You're talking about Iona Prep, St. Uh, Stepanak. And he's got some of that as. There's Flans, no good, battle for the loose ball. Look at a rebound by Caressi. Oh. 
the finish as a timeout was called to the 30 by Stepanak. So we'll stay here. But Caressi, he's got some of that Harlem swag in him as well. And that was a really nice uh, rebound put back by the sophomore. He's just so athletic. And, I mean, he's gifted with his size and strength as well. And right place in the right time, Stepanak will take it. A busy stretch here for the Varsity Media Sports Network. And got a bit of a doubleheader next Tuesday. We've got Chaminade St. Anthony's in the Long Island Catholic League. You'll be on the call for that one. I will be in Middle Village as St. Francis Prep takes on Christ the King. We've got Port Washington girls against Syosset, and then Hayes and Christ the King. Another girls showdown, Connectquat Northport. And you see the whole host of other games there coming up as well. All those games and more right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Off the timeout. There's Diaz. Stripped. And whether he's wearing zero or 14, Carbusia will get the basket, a goaltending violation. And thanks to the other 14, Brandon Stores on the goaltend uh, there as well. That's where Stores, he knew, he knew it right away. Shouldn't have touched it. Carbusia with six. Early on, has a Seton Hall offer, among others. But Seton Hall and Coach Holloway, the uh, world beaters in the Big East now. And two more for Carbusia. We go the other way, quickly losing on the way up, and then Caressi gets the strip from behind on Cherry. Nice look, Caressi inside. He's got 10-8 in this quarter. And a 30-second timeout called by the Ravens. Caressi is heating up here in the Bronx. That's exactly what you need. You know what you're going to get out of the Stars. When Caressi starts to eat, then everybody eats. Doing a good job getting up the floor. Nice find underneath. Look at Carbusia staring down his man after the no-look pass. A dime to a bucket. And Stepanak with a six-point edge. Caressi, really his coming out party was last year. Boogie Flan didn't play in this game here in the Bronx and a lot was put on Caressi's shoulders. Double digit points in that one. That was huge for him uh, and really hasn't looked back. Uh, 6.8 points per game. Three and a half rebounds as well and uh, it has been a very good start of his sophomore season for Hassan Caressi. You know, it's, we talk about snowballing and just getting better and in your game, and there's a difference, right, Dylan? You, you see it pay off in practice. Pat Masseroni had a good quote. He said, anything that's going on at 6.30 or 4.30 as stores cans the jumper, um, it's not like we're going to roll it out there for the first time. Everything is practiced and meticulously uh, choreographed, so you're ready to go come game situation, and Caressi was the benefactor of a great game against St. Ray's, and he's parlayed that into what's being a good career at Stepanak. I think that's especially true with these two programs as Ritfo uh, gets the finish inside. Both really good coaching staffs and both really uh, meticulous is the word to use for their preparation. That is for, for sure. Corner three is good. Eliza Cherry. Thirty-five, thirty-two, the lead for Stepanak. Ritfo, both coaches even identified, and really George Lopez especially identified Ritfo as perhaps that X factor here. Uh, definitely a guy that he was concerned about. He felt pretty confident that he had guys in other spots who can guard different guys, but Ritfo, especially for his size, six-seven, his ability to step out, shoot it better now inside as well. Uh, a really tough matchup for the Ravens. And someone that high school coaches are saying, how is this guy not committed or got a groundswell of offers? And we're saying the same thing. A 6'7 guy that could shoot it, uh, play off the dribble. Those offers will come, but for Stepanak right now, the X factor, and you could make the argument that at times they're best player. Listen, John, you and I have seen this league a long time. There's nothing quite like a senior, an uncommitted senior with a chip on his shoulder, and that's what Braylon Ritvo is this year. Look at this. Caressi. A triple. He loves this floor. Yeah. He loves the Ravens' nest. It's his home. 
He's certainly playing like it is. Three in and out. A uh, big rebound by Big Pang. An important one to finish inside. Yeah, St. Raymond needed a bucket. It's been a few minutes since they were able to get one on the board, and good job there. 13 already for Caressi. A triple there for Carbusia. And Stepanak late in this second quarter, opening up a lead. 41-34 now. Floater, short by Diaz. Off of Caressi, though. And this will allow St. Ray's, with the shot clock off, possibly the final shot of this first half. Well, I'm for them just slowing it down. You get a good shot off, try and build some momentum. You get a two or a three, you're feeling good going into the locker room. Pang off the inbounds. There's Stores, guarded by Flan. Turnaround dripper, kind of forced that one. Rebound goes to Jervis, and we can go the other way. And now, look, Stepanak has the chance here to extend their lead at the half. And this is when Boogie Flan is at his best. He's got the ball in his hands, and he'll slow it down. Vintage Boogie coming up. Yeah, Boogie on Stores. Gets by him, gets to the lane. What a bucket by Boogie. And that ends the first half, and Boogie has opened up a nine-point lead for the Crusaders here at halftime. It's halftime here in the Bronx, and we're joined by Stepanak, head coach Pat Masseroni. And uh, Pat, uh, you spoke about the Harlem swag that uh, Hassan Karesi has. His coming out party was here a year ago. Loves the Ravens' nest, apparently. He said to me right before I gave my little fist pound of good luck, he said, Coach, I like this gym, and he sure does. So we used another 16 minutes with Haas and, uh, and a team effort. That's a total team effort right there. We knew it was going to be a high-level game, and, and Haas gave us a spark off the bench. Yeah, and that's what we talked about, too, yesterday. You said one of the keys to the game is defense, uh, excuse me, transition defense, your assessment through the first half. Yeah, I thought we did a fairly good job of it. We got beat on a couple times. You know they're going to get out and run. Um, Ty, you know, does a great job. They got great athleticism. Um, this is far from over. I thought our guys did a good job of adjusting a little bit of foul trouble, right? Braylon had two. Boogie and Danny picked up one early. We went zone a little bit to try to frustrate them. But I love our toughness, our toughness and finishing at the rim and second shots, sharing the ball. That's what I like there. Pat, what, Pat what's the message to your guys here at halftime to come out in the second half? Yeah, no game is, is won at halftime. No game is lost at halftime. You know, we got to make sure we do a good job of continuing to share the ball. They're junking it up a little bit defensively. We thought they'd run and jump Boogie and be physical. He's doing a great job of moving. Uh, we know we got 16 more minutes of this. Awesome stuff, Pat. Good stuff. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Got it, Taylor, James, RJ. What's up? Oh, there you go. Shout outs. Love it from Pat Masseroni, one of the good guys here in this Catholic high school league. 43-34, the defending champions with the lead here at the break. We'll get some halftime stats and more when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Looking to grow your business on social media? Let Varsity Media help you. With over 50,000 followers across our platform, sponsor a segment during the broadcast and share it on social media the next day. It's the best of both worlds as you'll get thousands of plays and your ad will live on the broadcast forever. Contact us today for sponsorship packages by calling 917-470-0864 or emailing varsitymediasponsors at gmail.com. My name is Grant Vermeer, a member of the Crown Refs community. My first year as a high school official, that's when I found out about the Crown Refs community. Having my military background, I love being a part of teams. I want to be a part of a group that has high standards, that holds each other accountable, but also supports and loves each other, and has a desire for everyone in the group to grow. If you're a young referee or someone who loves refereeing and wants to be a part of a group, this is an amazing community for you. 
I feel like I've gotten better as an official. I've had a community and friends and support through this process, which can otherwise be a little bit lonely as you're on the road a lot. The culture is amazing in here. Make sure to come check it out. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. Bring your passion and creativity to our dynamic, diverse community and join with others who are motivated to lead, serve, and make a difference. At St. Raymond, you join a network of over 8,000 Ravens who have begun their life journey benefiting from a Catholic education. Becoming a Raven means joining a network of men committed to success, service, and who are passionate for a better tomorrow. The St. Raymond High School for Boys. Become a Raven today. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button, and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. Feel like your game film is too stagnant and not providing you with the insight that your coaches had hoped for? Varsity Media offers game film to help your coaches develop a game plan to execute on game day. Our current clients love the Varsity Media difference, which includes more insightful camera angles and a speedy upload process. Start building your championship team today with award-winning individuals at Varsity Media. Did you just have the best athletic year of your life? And now you want to show it off to college coaches? Well, let Varsity Media help you. Varsity Media's college recruiting videos show off your unique skills to help you land a spot on the team of your dream school. We'll provide music, spot shadow effects, and a link to send to your next coach. Contact us today for more information. Don't rely on word of mouth or cold emails. Let Varsity Media help you take your game to the next level. When it comes to advertising, are you hitting the right audience? Why waste your time with television or a free print publication that's given out at a local deli? Varsity Media has your back. With a following of over 50,000 and a local demographic ranging between the ages of 18 and 54 years old, it's time to get that return on investment. Plus, here's the best part. Your ad lives forever on our YouTube page. And with a large on-demand audience, it's a grand slam to advertise with Varsity Media. We welcome you back to the Bronx. And uh, listen, uh, it is tough to get a seat here. John Perez in the Bronx, uh, that is for certain. Even if you are a collegiate coach, as it is a packed house here in the Bronx with Stepanak and St. Ray's doing battle. Yeah, and there you see Rasheen Davis, assistant coach over at Seton Hall already, an offer 
to Carbusia. I know everyone here in the New York metropolitan area, Rick Patino and St. John's, and I'm one of those guys. How about the job that Seton Hall's done this year? They knocked off UConn, uh, had a big win the other day against Marquette. Uh, is a team that's on the rise, Shaheen Holloway. All he does is win wherever he goes. This is uh, for sure. Let's take a look at the first half stats for you. And obviously numbers skewing for Stepanak. You see the score 43-34, even on the rebounds. But look at the assists on those bu buckets as well. Ten assists on those 19 field goals tells you that you're sharing the ball. They had 19, which was a season high against Iona Prep. And they're uh, right there. Uh, you know, right, uh, picking up where they left off on Saturday. Yeah, and they're pacing towards that 19 assist again. It's really, and only two turnovers for Stepanak. That's unheard of. And of course, that's because you've got uh, Flandin Carbusia patrolling the way, but 61% field goal percentage. That's because you're getting those open looks thanks to the assist. St. Ray's has to slow it down uh, and start to chip away defensively at Stepanak. Some of the leading scorers in this one, Caressi, a huge second quarter. He scored 11 of his 13 in that second frame. A fr second frame that Stepanak scored 29 points in. 11 points apiece for Carbusia and Fland as well. To lead the way for St. Ray's, you've got 11 from Turnage and 10 from Stores. Those are the two guys that obviously you expect for St. Ray's to shoulder the load here. And yeah, I mean, the point totals. They are what they are, and you're getting what you're getting out of your stars. I think the biggest thing was how Stepanak played with Ritvo on the bench and his two fouls. Uh, keep an eye on how the Crusaders play coming in the second half. Ritvo's going to be playing those extended minutes. Uh, that could open up another uh, wrinkle in the offense. And for St. Ray's, they just got to continue to adjust turnage. If he continues to knock down his threes, uh, it should be a fun finish. We mentioned before, in the open at least, St. Ray's, they average 74.4 points a game. That leads the entire Catholic League in the Archdiocese and the Brooklyn Queens as well. And they've only conceded 64.4 points per game. And on the other side of things, Stepanak, they average 70.2 points per game. And they have given up 65.1%. And that's why they're one of the best teams, not just in the metropolitan area, but in the nation as well. And the number is telling a full story. Both teams with national schedules and keeping top talent in the 60s. I'll sign up for that every day of the week, twice yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, on <laughs> and they're not quite done with their national schedule. Both are going up to the Hoop Hall in Springfield, Massachusetts this weekend. It's an early trip for St. Ray's. They got the Friday game against uh, Springfield Central for Stepanak. They got Don Bosco prep. Scoop layup is good by Turnage. Yeah, and there's Turnage. They want to turn Ty into that bona fide scorer that he is and get him off to a hot start. You want to feed your stars early and get a stop defensively if you're St. Ray's. Jervis, the sophomore. Good looking sophomore, too, at that at 6'5". A foul was called off the ball. Yeah, that's coming on the other end. Cherry gets picked up for his first. And how about St. Raymond doing a good job of the first half? Uh, it was really just stores with the two fouls, but overall, yeah. not fouling a bunch. Yeah, Stepanak uh, had, if you want to call it the edge <laughs> fouls, they were certainly more foul prone in that first half, but only Ritfo picked up two. So they were able to manage that with their depth, that is for sure. Fland stripped on his way up by Diaz. Diaz goes end to end for the layup. A little freshman on senior crime right there, and Fland knew it right away, and Diaz. 6-1 freshman doing a good job. And Diaz has six already in this one. Carbusia behind the back, inside. Count it! Fouled by Turnage, and Carbusia going for the old-fashioned three-point play. A little stare down to the crowd as well afterwards. What a fantastic finish, and that's something that Carbuccia has done a fantastic job of in the offseason, finishing at the rim and getting stronger and bulking up, and that allows him to get three the old-fashioned way, but this is the free throw. Yeah, free throw, no good. Stores with the rebounds. He drives inside, and a foul was called. So Carpuccia giveth and taketh away. 
Misses the free throw and then a foul. Inbound goes up top to Stores. And a traveling violation is called. Yeah, establish that pivot foot, then slid it. Carbu ball. Carbusi on the ball. 14 offers for him. From the likes of the locals like FDU, Fordham, Stony Brook. A steal as we go the other way. It's Cherry, and he loses it. Here's Jervis ahead of the field. Flant, he misses. Diaz the other way, hands off. Turnage up top. And now St. Ray's will look to get more into their half court set. Stores underneath, good ball movement. The three is good by Diaz. What a quarter for Diaz. He gets the strip, now knocks down the three. And just like that, a brand new ball game. Four point edge for the Crusaders. Yeah, he's got nine, does the freshman Diaz. Jervis, good play. Here's Ritfo. He can knock it down from there, and he does just that. First triple of this game for Braylon Ritfo. Well, if the Crusaders were missing anything in the first half, it was Ritfo who enters himself into the scorebook in the second half. Diaz feeling it a little bit here. Leads it to Stores. Turns short. Defended well by Ritfo. We go the other way. Carbusia. He is hammered on his way up. Foul called on Cherry. Yeah, Cherry threw the hip right into Carbuccia. Tough collision there. So Carbuccio just need a couple of moments to catch his breath. And this gives us an opportunity to continue to speak about his recruitment. We mentioned some of those locals as well as you see him getting to the hoop. Also LIU, UMass, Providence, Robert Morris, St. Louis, Seton Hall, St. Bonaventure. West Virginia, East Carolina, Xavier, and Bryant. Well, Dylan, you and I are old enough to remember that in college basketball, transferring was not as frequent, oh, yeah. obviously, as it is right now. Would you love to be at a Power 5 school? Yes, but is that the right fit for Carbuccia? Do you want to go to a Power 5 school, sit on the bench, or not take a lot of minutes, or play to mid-major, get a ton of minutes, build up your credit, and then transfer over uh, to these Division One schools? A, a good decision for Carbuccia to have. Diaz unable to get that basket. He's defending Flan now. But to that point, listen, he wants to be a high major. And for, as Flan gets to the basket for two, that's good news for Mazzaroni, right? Because you know you're going to get the best out of your point guard this year. 100%, uh, especially if he can learn from a guy like Flan. And you know, those stepping out guys are always close. An important triple by Kamari White. His second of this game. Flan, though, to the basket for two more. I love that Flan misses the bunny and then comes back with two acrobatic shots, and it just shows the evolution of his game. 15 for him. A nine-point lead. Moments ago, it was the largest lead of this game at 10. Another corner three, and now it's White heating up. Back-to-back -back triples for White. 32nd timeout is called. Interesting timeout, too, for George Lopez. Let's take another look how this breaks down defensively for Stepanak, and White gets some space. Gabriel doesn't transition over. I know he's got a 6'8 wingspan, but you got to close out faster than that. And St. Raymond now. I like that time out there. And as you take another look in turnage, starting it off. What this allows, hey, there you go, there's the miscommunication. The switch doesn't happen. Carbucci doesn't follow his man, or Gabriel doesn't finish the assignment. Either way, leads to a dagger, uh, uh, nailing the three for St. Raymond. I think that's a timeout that Lopez takes to calm his team down and say, hey, we've got to get a stop defensively. We're hitting our shots. Now let's parlay that into a defensive stand and get back into this game because you don't want to be treading water at about like a six-point deficit. As much as that looked like a play for White, there are no plays drawn by George Lopez for Kamari White. That's what makes him such a unique player is that he gets his. He's averaging 12.5 points a game all out of just sort of broken plays or being that junkyard dog. Again, 
We reference his nickname, Wolverine. Flan lost his dribble, hands off to Caressi. Was red hot in that second quarter. Diaz affected that shot. Here comes Storrs in transition. Hands off, White to the basket. But he is fouled on the way there. Yeah, so there's your stop, and now you turn that into a trip to the free throw line. And White, you know, you mentioned 12 and a half. He's just always nosing for a double-double, and that's great when you can have your, quote, junkyard dog cleaning up the glass, leading the way defensively, getting a little bit done as Flan speaks to Mark Casamassa, the lead referee for tonight's game. Yeah, nothing like trying to maybe talk your way into getting that foul called your way in that next opportunity in a respectful way. Well, this is a veteran crew here, and they'll hear out Flan's case. They won't change the call, but they'll hear it out. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Boogie might actually have a gripe there. That kind of called for that undercut. And you can see a little bit there above the basket, above that Ravens country. One of the coolest aspects, I think, of one of the coolest gyms in New York City. It's the Skybox. Uh, you know you've made it, I guess, in this league <laughs> if you've made it up to the Skybox. Back to our cut. Fland fouled by White. And now Flan a little shaken up, too, is what you don't want to see. Remember, missed some time last year. And just needs a moment. So an inbound underneath. As you see, not an inch of bleacher to be had here in any corner of the Raven's Nest here. The Park Chester section of the Bronx. We were... Worried maybe if the earlier start because of the inclement weather would take away the intensity. Not a chance. There's Jervis. Missed his shot. Battle for the loose ball. It's still loose and it's Turnage who picks it up. Stores though. Looks like he got shaken up by the bench. Holding his ankle a little bit. And then a foul was called on the other end. It's going to be against Jervis. Yeah, Stores comes limping up the floor. 14 and white for St. Raymond. You'll see him into your picture. And there he is. And... Starting to get physical here, right? Old-fashioned Catholic League basketball. Diaz. In the corner, a bounce pass to Storrs. Turns on his defender. Looks to get there. Fouled on his way up. Ritvo called for the foul. And that should be his third. Well, if they were going to find a way to sub Ritvo, now would be the time to do so anyway, coming up on his minutes. Now, he didn't play a lot of minutes in the first half, but you have to trust your players, too, to not pick up that fourth foul. Still in the game. As there's Diaz, guarded by Carbusio, lost the handle. Good defense by Carbusio. Carbusio, even though he's a little undersized, 6'1", has a bigger wingspan as well, and long arms. And with those quick hands and those long arms, you can cause disruption defensively. Very good defensive guard. His points this year are down from last year, but he's doing more things and more winning plays as Caressi was called for the foul. His second. Yeah, moving screen, saying that he was being tugged at, and St. Ray's gets a break. And you feel like this is an opportunity here, a couple of possessions where Stepanak doesn't score. Like, this is a chance here for St. Ray's as the horn sounded at the scorer's table. A chance here, you would think, John, with 2.47 left in the third quarter for Ray's to not get back in it. They're in it, but take that next step. Right. You can't continue to tread down two scores. Uh, you you want to ultimately take the lead, but... Keep it out of bucket, keep it to one point, and lock down defensively. I think defensively, that's where St. Ray's should be focused on right now because they're getting good shots and they're falling in, but they haven't had an answer for Stepanak on the defensive end. Turnage on the ball. He's been a little bit quiet here to start the second half. Hands it off to Stores. Stores with 10. There were some steps, and he was called for the travel. I love that. If we could see the replay there, Stepanak doing a good job of pulling the door and causing that travel for Storrs. I believe uh, that was Jervis underneath. So here's Carbuccia defending him. 
Hold on, watch. See, he pulls the door. Carbuccia pulls the door because Storrs is anticipating contact. And now we get a foul the other way. Yeah, Storrs trying to use his frame, the, the, his body. And to do, to do that, you need the defender to stay on you, right? So you're right, a heady play there. Some basketball IQ used. And here come the Ravens. And now a screen called the other way. It's against White, his third. So now you see one of the substitutions we thought we would see, Ritfo to the bench. Amir Sullivan back in for the Crusaders. As we approach two minutes left in this third quarter, Carbusia hands off. Actually, Ritfo stayed in it. It looked like he was walking to the bench. Didn't come out of the game. Here's Carbusi, a little shake and bake, a little scoop layup. And if you're George Lopez, that kills you, right? You had a few opportunities there. There's White for three, though. Well, a good answer back there. Like we said, we know that St. Raymond can fill up the cup. It's about defending. Carbusi doubled, corner three, Sullivan! They just don't get back and defend, Dylan, and that's going to be the Achilles heel for St. Raymond if they continue this path. Nice shot fake, scoop layup, no good. Big rebound by Stores and a putback. Good, so there's your bucket for St. Ray's. You need that. They have to defend as Carbucci is in the driver's seat. Caressi, back rim, no good. Battle for the loose ball. That's one by Ritfo. What a layup. Good job by Ritfo to stay with it, dribbling as he was on his knee. For St. Ray, you can't let that happen. Store spins, gets two. But now, as you mentioned, keep mentioning it, but it's for a reason. You gotta get a stop. Carbusia gets two more. Sixty-two fifty-six. Shot clock is off. Diaz spins, kicks it out. Corner three, off the mark. Here's Ritfo ahead of the field, blocked by White, but Carbusia, and that will be a goaltend. So count the bucket for Carbusia. What a big third quarter for the junior guard. Yeah, listen, the block is nice. Nobody gets back for St. Ray's. That can't happen. Fantastic job by Carbusia and the rest of Stepanak for recognizing that. And they were going to score on that end regardless. 20 now for Carbusia. Nine here in this third quarter. And the lead up to eight. Here's Diaz. Two seconds, hands off, White to the bucket. Does it count? It does. Massaroni says no, but he's not going to win that argument. So a buzzer beater here for the Ravens. How big might this one be? We'll see. We don't get a look at the clock. Well, you know, we'll take the, word, we'll take the official's word for it. So, either way, St. Ray's needed that. Yeah, White beats the buzzer. It's a eight-point lead or six-point lead for Stepanak here after three. Fourth quarter when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Hey, it's Isaiah Hartenstein. You're watching Varsity Media. Varsity Media offers live streaming services for any sport. With human beings behind the camera, you can expect the proper coverage angles during each game. We offer customizable options such as live scoreboard, multiple cameras, instant replay, graphics, and even announcers. Find out how you can save $100 off a live stream package with Varsity Media by calling 516-403-2050 or email Ben at Varsity Media. We welcome you back to the Raven's Nest here in the Parkchester section of the Bronx. Packed house 
for this Archdiocese showdown between the Ravens and the defending Catholic League champions, the Crusaders of Stepanak. Dylan Butler, John Perez, our entire varsity media crew here with you. It's been a fun one in Stepanak. They got out to an early lead. And St. Ray's had a lead for a few seconds in that second quarter, but largely it's been Stepanak uh, in control of this one. You see two teams that, for Stepanak, like we said in the open, they were the hunted, or they were the hunters, now they are the hunted. And St. Ray's hoping to be Stepanak in the future, but they've got to defend. Caressi to the hoop for two more. 15 for Caressi. You know, Carbosia stole the show, but you can make the case that Caressi's the player of the games, getting it done on both ends of the floor. He mentioned his coming out party here a year ago in Parkchester. Runner on the and the baseline, no good. What a strong putback by Pang. Pang shown flashes of brilliance throughout this game, and just a lot of upside, raw talent there. But I'm interested to see the type of player he turns out to be. Carbusia leads Stepanak with 20. This man, a Kentucky-bound Fland, with 15 front rim three, no good. Unfortunate though, as for St. Ray's, that is, went off of Diaz's hands, so it will stay with Stepanak. All the way back to Carbusia. This is part of the 94-foot player that yeah, Carbusia yes. has turned into. Uh, and he has waged a personal war here with the students. Corner three, no good. There is Diaz with the rebound. Stronger hands there for the freshman, but this time lost it on his way out. This one went off of Howard Isley Jr. There's a good look at... Howard Isley Jr., of course, dad, former NBA player, Nick's assistant, now on Juwan Howard's staff at Michigan. Pretty nice time to be on that campus, right? Yeah, I'd imagine so, especially after last night. Strong move, Stores doesn't get the finish, but he'll go to the line. Foul on Perry, his second. And that first is good. 15 right now for Stores. Well, he's been as good as advertised. And Georgia, Rutgers, Xavier, George Mason, and, and Syracuse among his offers. Knocks down both. Chance of defense here rings out at the Ravens' nest. Carbusia. Hands off. There's Perry. Strong to the hoop. Lefty finish. Dylan Perry's first points of this game. They just have so much size stepping at, and they can really do a good job cutting into the paint. Yeah, Perry, 6'6", sophomore off the bench. Hofstra Bryant, his offers. Here's Stores inside. Lost it, but it will stay with St. Ray's. Pang doing a good job battling for that one. And I think he kind of even inadvertently knocked it off of Fland. As we said, standing room only here. We're, what, too deep on the baseline, it looks like. Turnage reverses, and he's fouled. We'll leave that on Isley. You know, with the state of uh, emergency in New York State, all the resources are being allocated, so maybe it's a good thing that the fire marshal's not here <laughs> and it's being allocated to what should be uh, horrid weather after this game ends. So turnage, 11 in the first half, just two thus far in the second half. Make it three now. He's a guy, again, just still a junior. Mentions uh, recruitment. Bryant, Creighton, Fordham, Hofstra, Mississippi State, Norfolk State, URI, Robert Morris, Seton Hall, UAB are his offers to this point. That's all? That is all. What did Boogie have before he committed to Kentucky? Like 30-something offers? Yeah.
Four point game. It wasn't one of the keys, but it's John Perez's key, that is for sure. And get a stop is, is, is key one, two, and three right now for the Ravens. Rotate on defense and don't give Stepanak open looks outside the arc. And that's it's been feast or famine at times defensively for St. Ray's. Flan to inbounds. Gets it to Carbusia. Diaz defending him. Bounce pass to Flans. What a bucket inside by Flans. Timeout was called by Stepanak. And it is a full one as well. We'll take it with them. 528 left here. Fourth quarter. Stepanak with a six-point lead. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Welcome back to the Bronx. Dylan Butler, John Perez with you here for this New York City showdown between St. Ray's and Stepanak. Look at this, Carbusi, what a bounce pass. And I, I, the fact that he, listen, Flan knew that he's going in against the Beast, right? And Pang and, and just affected his shot, protected the ball, uh, and one of the reasons he's going to Kentucky. Yeah, nothing intimidates Boogie Fland. I think the good thing is just his ball control uh, as well, finishing at the hoop, and that's something that you're going to need to compete in the SEC. And get Kentucky over the hump, right? I mean, it seems like forever since they um, won a national championship or at least had success on the floor, and that didn't pertain to just their student athletes. How fun was it when it was Louisville, Kentucky, and it was Patino Calipari going at it? I mean, I like Patino where he is right now. Don't get me 100%. wrong. <laughs> Turnage, and that's two St. John's alums here on the call for you, and uh, fouled by Isley on his way up. You feel a little bit for Isley as well, a guy who shot it so well last year, especially down the stretch of the season, and uh, because of an ankle injury, in the preseason, it affected his start of the season as well and you know, hasn't scored or really gotten the time probably that he would want. Yeah, and because of that, it's bled into his, result, uh, his stats this year. 0 for 9 shooting um, coming into the game and someone who will turn it on eventually. Um, he's just too good of a player to do so, but has to get back into game shape. Once that happens, the sky's the limit for Isley. After those two free throws by Turnage, four-point game, 70-66. Stepanek right on there, season average for points in a game. Carbusia looks it down low to Perry, kicks it back out to Caressi. Good play defensively by Stores, but he got that last touch, so it'll stay with Stepanek as Ritvo comes in for Isley. Yeah, that's one that he probably should have kicked to the corner for Isley to get him going, but... Either way, Stepanak still in control, 14 seconds. Inside to Ritfo, ball goes out, and it again stays with Stepanak. Yeah, paying the last person to touch it. Carbusia guarded by Diaz, nine on the shot clock. Pulls it back out. To Perry with three, they gotta get it up. Caressi doesn't realize it. Shot clock violation. Maybe that's your stop defensively that you've been calling for for the Ravens. I think if you're St. Raymond, you take any stop that you can that doesn't uh, lead to a foul or turnover, and good job there. Two-possession game. St. Ray's can slow it down, get an open shot. And now Turnage playing off the ball with Diaz running the point. Bounces it to Stores. Turnage, the open three. Front rim no good. Tr battle for the ball. It goes to Perry. Here comes Fland in transition. 
ahead to Ritfo. Inside, Perry rejected on the way up. But a foul was called on Pang. I have to see that again. I don't know. It, off the naked eye, it looks like it was all ball. Good job streaking to the rim for Stepanak. I'll take another look. No, he missed it there. But we know how the home fans feel about that. That is certain. And they're getting loud on these free throw attempts by Perry. Certainly a different kind of player as Perry misses the first. Here's a different look, John. That, that's a block. Well, as the kids say today, maybe ball don't lie. First free throw, no good. And Perry's second rims out as well. Here's Turnage. Ahead to Stores, guarded by Fland. Top of the key to White. This first game has lived up to the hype. As we said, maybe one of four. Stores off the glass. Good job muscling his way inside. Another area that he improved on his post game and getting closer to the basket, playing with his back to the hoop. 18 for Brandon Stores, a two point ball game. Here's Flans. A blocking, no wait. He just lost it, Dylan. Another defensive stop for St. Raymond. And now the Ravens with the ball, a chance to tie the game with 3.25 left in the fourth quarter. Or take the lead. Here's Stores. And a foul is called on the drive. And that's the fourth on Ritvo. Big foul for Stepanak because you're losing someone that can knock down a shot, play well defensively, and do well, or do things well in transition. Maceroni going to stick with him, 317 in regulation. Yeah, third foul as well of this quarter, so uh, in good shape there. Here's Stores looking to go baseline. Double comes in Perry. Tries to split that, lost it on his way. Ritvo, the steal, loose ball, and Perry's pushed from behind by White, that was a good call by Casamassa. Yeah, it's high turnage down on the floor on the other end for St. Raymond, uh, which is the cause of concern. We'll take another look at the last play. You see turnage go down. And yeah, an easy foul call against White. And there's an, in, an injured player, and that's the concern right now uh, as it is turnage who is down, holding his shin. That's a player you can ill afford to lose to injury. As it seems like the first time all afternoon, the Ravens nest, uh, a hush in this crowd. Yeah, he's their floor general. He brings so much to the table, and you're mm -hmm. hoping that this is just an abbreviated absence for turnage and not something more serious. That was a good look you see in the suit there. Assistant coach Myron Hickman. When the Ravens last won the championship in 2012, uh, it was Hickman as the guard on that team. There you see Myron. What a terrific team that was. You had Daniel Dingle and Kerwin Okoro, Shane Rector as well. Uh, that was a Ravens team that uh, won their seventh intersectional title in 2012, beating Holy Cross 66-58 in that final. That was their last championship, and it's a team that, listen, you heard it from Pat Masseroni, considered St. Ray's a team you got to put in that conversation among the favorites. Obviously, his team is right there, Christ the King as well. And maybe the third favorite, if you want to call it that right now, uh, would be perhaps the Ravens. I think it's that. I think it's another top-heavy league in in the CHSAA overall. Um, and it's interesting to see what happens um, outside of this top three. But, yeah, for St. Raymond, this could be the first of four times that they play Stepanak, but you want to split against the Crusaders this year as that's not a good sign for Turnage going to the locker room. Yeah, putting no weight on that leg either, so... Uh, a concern certainly for the final 303, but also beyond that right now for the Ravens. So 
So Stepanak ball in front of their own bench. It's Caressi to inbounds. Back out to Garbusia. Carbusia gets it inside to Ritfo. Ritfo doesn't get the first, but he'll get the second. Love the aggressiveness with four fouls, too. Now on the other end, St. Raymond has to key in and know that Ritfo's got four fouls. Go at him. Ritfo now with 13 points. Here's White. Kick out to Diaz. Backs it up, pushes it inside now. Store stripped on his way there. I think Carbusia got a piece. Ritfo ahead of the field for two. How about Ritfo and his four fouls of four straight points? And this is what good teams do, Dylan. There's crunch time and there's winning time. And for Stepanak, getting close to that winning time, six point edge, two to play. And timeout called by St. Ray's. But Casamassa wants to, well, he had a foul first. So I think the foul actually came before the timeout was called. Yeah, so they'll probably, they'll, they'll honor the timeout, but we'll get a foul first. And then Casamassa will ask Lopez if he still wants to take that timeout. Well, he'll probably say after these free throws, please. You don't want to ice your guy. Yeah. So Stores will go to the line. He's got 18 in this game. Knocks it down. Has made all of his free throws to this point. Five for five from the line. Perry checks out. Jervis in for him. And it's good again. So I guess Lopez will call off that timeout. Now he'll look to press. 1-3-1, one, one. full court. Jervis hands off. Nice fake up and under for Caressi. It's all done with the ball fake. Gets a little separation. Daylight in a bucket. 17 now for Caressi. Six-point lead for Stepanak as Diaz has it guarded by Carbusia. Stores off the mark. Caressi, the rebound. And Massaroni racing up the sideline to call the timeout. He still has some burn there in the legs. Well, you got to get your cardio in one way or another. Uh, for Stepanak and of course obviously a big game for them they want to get out of here with a W and you know just looking forward and build upon this record uh, going forward for the Crusaders. Let's take a look at that upcoming schedule as well and you got Mount St. Michael at home and then again a bit more of that national schedule uh, Don Bosco prep at the Hoop Hall in Springfield Mass and, and then you get really into the rest of the season your league schedule home for St. Ray's home for St. Peter's at Scanlon Home for Hayes, a rematch of the last two intersectional championships, and then at Mount St. Michael. Can't wait to see that matchup with Don Bosco, especially with Dylan Harper, just committed over to Rutgers. Um, fantastic guy. He showed out at the uh, Jordan Classic and just continued. Number two player uh, in the country at his position. So he and Flan should be fun. And we'll take a quick look at St. Ray's upcoming schedule. Springfield Central at the Hoop Hall. Home for St. Peter's at Lachlan, at Stepanak, at Malloy. And then home for Iona, home for Hayes. And right after that Hayes game, they're home for St. Francis Prep, which is a game we'll have for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. That should be a fun one as well. And now the timeout called by George Lopez as White was battling for that loose ball on the court. And he'll call the full timeout. 
as the Varsity Media Sports Network will be your home to the Catholic High School League postseason as well as Nassau County's playoffs as well. All of those games are going to be busy in the months of February and March. All those games for you right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. YouTube.com Varsity Media is your site. And we've been home to the Catholic Championships the last couple of years. And we take a look at some of those uh, champions as well. We mentioned back-to-back -back years where it was Hayes and Stepanek and they switched that title off two years ago with Hofstra. It was Hayes beating Stepanak. Hayes getting their revenge at St. John's last year. And you see before that, Christ the King beating Stepanak. Stepanak beating Christ the King. Hayes in that terrific game against Malloy as well. That up at Fordham. And then Z uh, Zavarian beating Lachlan in that Brooklyn battle. And then a lot of Christ the King. And we mentioned before that 2012 championship for St. Ray's over Holy Cross. Looking at the middle right there, 2017, Cardinal Hayes beat a team with two NBA players and four Division I uh, players as well. It was a young upstart Cardinal Hayes team, the first for Joe Lodes. A Toussaint part yep. of that team. What a leader he was. Here's White in the backcourt. A minute 15 left, six point lead for Stepanak. Here's Diaz, the floater. Short, Diaz, his own rebound, kicks it back out for White. Back in the hands of the freshman, Diaz. Anderson Diaz, as we approach a minute left, goes for the lefty layup. What a move for the freshman. Here's Carbusia now, good switch to Flans. And Flans to the hoop, up and under for two. I mean, that should put the game on ice. St. Ray's has to do a better job getting on him defensively and trying to force a stop. Anderson lost it. How about that for Flan too, right? He's your guy, likely a McDonald's All-American, diving on the floor for a loose ball that will go the other way, but that speaks to his leadership, that is for sure. Well, and that's why he's the best point guard in the country, because he does everything. Now ESPN has him at number 18 in his class. Full timeout called, we'll take it here with them as well. 34 seconds left in this one. Stepanak looking to close it out. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Are you a local business looking for new and creative ways to promote your company? Varsity Media offers affordable rates that can get your message across to a demographic of 18 to 54 years of age. Our follower base across social media is over 50,000 strong and our viewership numbers per game are in the thousands. Don't blow your advertising budget on old staples like TV and radio media. Reach out to Varsity Media to get the best bang for your buck. Welcome back to the Raven's Nest. Dylan Butler, John Perez, our entire Varsity Media crew here. Final 34 seconds. And Stepanak looking for another big win after an uncharacteristic three-game losing streak. And again, listen, your three-game loss, you know, you got to put that in perspective. Obviously, it's Mountain Verde, it's IMG Academy, uh, and then a really good St. Joe's uh, team as well from Jersey. So... Uh, Stepanak bounced back in a big way. Best 32 minutes of the year against Iona. That rivalry game won that one big. Uh, St. Rose, excuse me, from New Jersey. That was part of the uh, Jordan Holiday Classic at Baruch. You go to the corner. That's a three off the mark. Diaz rips down the rebound. That should be uncontested. That's a mistake by the Crusaders. Yeah, and that's something that Masseroni will talk about in the film session because now field, uh, a free throw makes it a three-point game. So Pang out. And in for St. Ray's is Hassan Cisse, who's known for his defense. Free throw off the mark. Jervis for the rebound. Foul him. You don't have to. They lose it. And that's lost as well. And then the foul was called as 
Caressi went diving on the court for that loose ball. The window was there, but the foul called against Diaz. That's just a tough break there for St. Raymond. Double whammy, he missed the free throw, can't control the rebound. And for Stepanak, inbound it, get it to Flanna Carbusia, hit your free throws and get home before the storm. Caressi to inbounds. Uh, but first, Casamasa wants uh, a little nice play between Carbusia and Diaz. Carbusia goes right back to Caressi to Fland. Ooh, hammered by Stores. And Fland's been uh, unfortunately going through it today. He held his hip and now gets one right to the grill. Hard foul there. Watch it again. Just looks bad on the replay. Nothing Flans, worse than getting poked in the eye. Yeah, Flan with 19 points, five rebounds, four assists to steal, a couple of turnovers, but an overall game, certainly for Boogie. Uh, but banged up there, and another timeout it was called, and... We mentioned before the spotlight, it's never been brighter on a player out of Stepanak than it has been on Flan, that is for sure. Uh, and he's had to deal with that. And again, it's a different world today too, right? With social media being what it is and, and you're kind of always in demand. And, and that's been the case for Boogie Flan. But Pat Masseroni, his head coach, that he's really dealt with that in a really good and positive and professional way. Yeah, and it's good at a young level because there is no fan base, absolutely no fan base, like Big Blue Nation and those Kentucky fans who will know everything about Boogie Fland, uh, where he has breakfast, his high school teachers, um, what he did for an art project in second grade. Uh, <laughs> he's ready for that scrutiny, and he embraces it, and if he learns it now, it's going to make him a better player for however long he's at Kentucky and one day, hopefully, in the National Basketball Association. And even with all the different defenses that he's had to deal with and the junk defenses and all the pressure on him, still averaging 20 and a half points a game. Knocks down that free throw. The chance early on here in the Ravens' nest was overrated. Uh, Bland has answered that emphatically here tonight. Second is good as well. Six point lead, 10 seconds left. Diaz, and that's smart by Stepanak to not challenge that time. And they don't even have to inbound this ball as they are victorious here, 80 to 76, the final. So big win by Stepanak. We'll take a quick break. And when we return on the other side, it'll be the Harrington Performance Postgame Show right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching Varsity Media, New York's high school sports network. Brian Harrington is the owner and head performance coach of Harrington Sports Performance and Transform Fitness and Recovery located in Tuckahoe, New York. Currently, Brian and his team have been contracted by multiple schools and for over the past 15 years to provide high-level strength and conditioning and performance training to their athletes. Brian works with basketball players from NYC's highest level talent down to the grassroots level. You can message him on his social media at Harrington underscore performance and use promo code HSP1 in the message details for a discount on an initial evaluation. High school sports fans, are you following Varsity Media on our YouTube channel? For the best coverage of New York high school sports, make sure you head to youtube.com slash varsity media. Three easy steps. First, hit that like button and then be sure to subscribe. And finally, tap that yellow bell to be notified of all of our upcoming sportscasts. Thank you for following Varsity Media on YouTube. We welcome you back to the Raven's Nest. Archbishop Stepanak's 80 to 76 victors over St. Raymond's. And it is now time for the Harrington Performance Postgame Show with over 15 years of experience training the top basketball players in New York City. Improve your game with Brian Harrington and use the promo code HSP1 
when you DM Harrington underscore performance to get a discount on your initial evaluation. And a guy who uh, had a terrific game here this afternoon. Uh, he might have forgot his jersey, but he brought his game, <laughs> that is for sure. It's Danny Carbusia from Stepanak. Uh, uh, Danny, congratulations, big thank win. You, Listen, this you. was a hyped game, man, and a uh, packed house here as well, and uh, you, you, you answered that call in a big way today. Yeah, most definitely. You know, we came out here trying to make a statement win. We know this is going to be a packed house, so we knew we had to come out, play with energy, and win this game. You guys have had a national schedule, and now with the targets on your back, when you look through the first month and a half of this season, how has that prepared you for um, this type of atmosphere and big games going forward? Uh, we felt like if we could compete in those games in national schedule, we could come out to the city and handle the business. Like We felt like no game is too big for us out here, so that definitely helped us a lot. Coach Mass said that uh, you know you guys had kind of had to circle the wagons and, and, and have some internal dialogue after an uncharacteristic three-game losing streak. Now listen, it was Mount Verde, it was IMG, you know, and, uh, and, and a really good St. Rose team as well. But you answered the bell against Iona, probably the best 32 minutes of the, of the season, and then another big win here uh, today as well. Yeah, most definitely. You know, losing three games in a row, that's something that never happened while I was here. So, you know, seeing that, we were just like, we got to look ourselves in the mirror. We got to bounce back. And luckily, we got two big statement wins. What can you say about the depth of this team? Everyone knows what you and Boogie are going to bring, but when you've guy, got guys like Ritvo, um, Perry, Caressi, how much of a punch and an added impact to this team do they bring? They bring a huge impact. They contribute a lot, whether it's in the, whether you see in the stats or you don't, but they make sure they play hard, whether they score or not. They make sure we stay together. Like, we all move in with one another, so it's like we need them to win. Like, and our team is, luckily, we got big depth, like you said. So with that, it's just like, it makes us, it makes our lives easier. Danny, you, 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 you don't have the zero today. You wear the 14, you drop 20 and get five. The big question here, is it 14 going forward now? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I, I feel weird warming up a little. I feel weird. I can't do this. <laughs> All right. He's going back to zero, but he, he, he's, he's bringing his game every night. Danny Carbusia, congratulations. Thank we you, wish thank you the best you. of luck the rest of the way as well. Thank you. So big win for Stepanak here on the road. Over St. Raymond's. 80 to 76. Carbusia with 20, not leading his team. Those... Free throws at the end, it was Flan with 21, Carbusia 20, Caressi 17, and Ritvo 15. Four guys in double-figure scoring. Uh, that's how you win a game on the road in the Catholic High School League. So that'll do it here from the Park Chester section of the Bronx. I want to thank our entire Varsity Media crew, our executive producer, Ben Turchin, our technical director, Chris Sweeney. For Travis DeLuise and Ron Pierre bringing you all those great moving images, our statistician extraordinaire, Eric Moore, my broadcast partner, John Perez, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us from the Bronx. We look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network.